Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Bethany at this uh, fourth Sunday of Easter. Also happens to be Earth Day on whatever occasion is glad in your heart. We're glad you've chosen to join us this day for a time of worship. My name is Pastor Russ, and along with Pastor Gary, who will be preaching, and Pastor Bridget, who will be helping serve communion, we welcome you to this space. If you are a new worshiper with us, we invite you to fill out the, I think it's goldenrod, the goldenrod little sheet of paper that, uh, with which you can give us information, and even if you have any information to update, please do fill that out appropriately to let us know. One other thing to share in joys of this community is, at, not at this worship, but at the next worship, we have not one. Not two, not even three. We have four baptisms. And I share that with you now because some of you just said, so this will be the shorter of the two services. <laughs> but sharing in the joy of Christ for those who will join our community, we, we give thanks with those communities. Knowing as well, too, that there are those who this day brings a heaviness of heart, so we uh, ask the prayers for those in the community with losses and such as well. I invite you to stand as we continue our worship with the confession and forgiveness found on the front of your worship bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Fight you to kneel. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to turn and face our processional cross as together we sing him 368.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is Psalm 23, which will be read responsibly. It's found in your bulletin. You will read the bold lines, and I will start the reading. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. The word of the Lord. Our next lesson is found on page 260 in the New Testament in your Bible, in the pew rack, in your pew rack. It is from 1 John 3, beginning at verse 16. So that's page 260 in the New Testament. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. The reading is found on page 107 in the New Testament portion of the Bibles in the pew rack in front of you. We're reading from John chapter 10, beginning at verse 11, where Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. 
I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. So today, the fourth Sunday of Easter, every year is known as Good Shepherd Sunday because every year, depending on what gospel we're in, we always look at shepherding kinds of images on this fourth Sunday of Easter. And so for three weeks, we've been looking at scripture passages that deal with Jesus visiting with his disciples after his resurrection. And now as we get into this fourth Sunday of Easter, we, we don't have those a continuation of stories of Jesus visiting with his disciples after his resurrection, but the, the, the poignancy of Easter still lives in the midst of these lessons because they continue to draw us into that great resurrection event. Even if we hear a gospel reading that happened before that event, it still sort of carries with us and carries through the resurrection to bring us some kind of that imagery. And maybe oftentimes we hear Psalm 23, a psalm of, of such comfort and peace, read at funerals because it is that, it is that sense that there's the, the very comfort and peace of heaven that comes out of Psalm 23. It's the kind of comfort and peace that is with us whenever we find ourselves in distress, when we find out that, that a loved one maybe is dying or has passed away. And it's that Psalm that just kind of reminds us of God's constant and, and really overwhelming uh, sense of love for us. And even in the pictures that get painted, we. We rarely often would hear this psalm and think about a scraggly hill, you know, with, with, with rocks and a, and a couple of stray bushes. But, but this psalm just reminds us of sort of that rolling field of green and a stream running through it, that kind of place that says, how could there be anything but peace there? And that's what Psalm 23 seems to do for us. And even as Jesus comes and talks to his disciples about being the, the great shepherd, the, the good shepherd of the sheep. He gives us this same kind of imagery that no matter what we run into, we can always count on Jesus' presence and talks about the way that no matter what happens, he would never leave us, but would always be there offering guidance, offering protection, offering a sense of love and wanting that to be universal that everybody is brought into that that one flock that we all understand Jesus as our one shepherd and that's certainly a model of what we would understand we want to see come out of the resurrection that we would understand that out of that great event there ought to be some kind of unifying way that the world is brought together by knowing that Jesus is raised for all of us and so Psalm 23 and this passage of the Good Shepherd, and then we hear John take this up again years later as he writes these three letters and talks about this commandment of love and how overwhelming that is for us and how that propels us forward into lives of love. I mean, I could stop right there. You, you know I'm not going to, but you know that, uh, that I could stop right there because that would seem to take care of everything. And it really, to be honest, that could take care of everything if we weren't so human. If we weren't the people who, who, who enter into stories like that and people could say, oh yeah, yeah. That sounds great. That sounds great, Pastor Gary, except you know what happened over here. You know, that sounds great, Pastor Gary, that whole thing of love and unity, except you know how much we sort of divide ourselves. You know how much we go after one another at times. And oh, we do. That, that's a part of our experience. And so when we hear these words of 1 John, and he talks about, we know love by this. We want to know, how do we truly know complete and everlasting love? 
And, and there at verse 8, 1 John kind of changes what he does. He's, he's giving us this declaration of Jesus, and I love the way he, he just changes tone a little bit, and he says, little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. You're like, oh, I was so ready just to love in word and speech. You know, I, uh, you should hear me love in word and speech. I am so good at it. I can profess to love nearly everybody. But word and action, oh, I don't like word and action. They call something out of me I'm not so thrilled with. I know what word and action are like when you're trying to deal with love and forgiveness and knowing that's an overwhelming part of your life. In fact, if we have some young people here, I'm going to invite you to come forward and share with me a few minutes. So if you don't have a driver's license yet, come on up and, and talk to me for just a minute or two. So we're talking about love in words and in actions. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my growing up. So growing up, I had two brothers, one of whom I liked to get in arguments with. And we probably even say that we fought at times. Now, we didn't like punch each other, fight, you know, but we would get really mad at each other sometimes. And then when we were really mad at each other and we wanted to stay mad at each other, you know what would happen? Is we would get called to dinner and we'd all be sitting around the dinner table together and sitting around the dinner table, what happens with all the food at the dinner table? Is it all right in front of just you? No, where's the food? It's kind of it's been bowls and it's, and it's scattered around the table, right? So there would be times when I would be eating dinner and I would put mashed potatoes on my plate, but guess where the gravy would be? Right in front of my brother, whom I was mad at, all right? And I didn't want to give him any satisfaction. So you know what I would do? I'd start eating my mashed potatoes without gravy, you know? How many bites of mashed potatoes can you get through without gravy? I stop at three. That's about where I can get to. So I'm having my mashed potatoes without gravy. And, and, and in my mind, he knows it. He knows he has the gravy. Would he offer to pass it to me? No, because we're mad at each other. What's he going to make me do? Ask for it. I have to ask for the gravy. Now, have you ever been really mad at somebody and asked them for something? Does it come out really pleasant? No, it doesn't. It comes out something like this. You could pass the gravy. That's how it comes out. Now, does mom let you talk like that at the dinner table? No, my mom didn't let me talk like that at the dinner table. So she would look and say, could you ask nicely? Do I want to ask my brother nicely about anything right now? No, but I have to, right? Could you pass the gravy? And then I'd get the look from my mom, because what, what word did I leave off? Please, right. Could you pass the gravy, please? And so it would get passed, and that I'd have to say, thank you, and he would have to respond back, you're welcome. And that would go on because then I would have like the dinner rolls in front of me. Think I was going to pass them to him? No. What was I going to make him do? Have to ask for him. And how did he have to ask? Nicely. Oh, I love that. He had to ask nicely, right? But when that would go on during dinner and I'd, I'd have to talk to him nicely and he would have to talk back to me nicely, Guess what would slowly happen? Yeah, we'd sort of put aside the argument. We wouldn't be as mad at each other anymore. Well, listen to this in Psalm 23. This is almost like a vision of heaven that comes to us. 
all the things that God is do for, going to do for us, but this is what God says. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, would you say to God, God, if you're going to set me up at a dinner table, please put me at a dinner table with people I don't like. Would you ask God that? No, who do you want to sit with? Your family and your best friends, and the family who feel like your best friends at the moment, right? That's what we would like to do. But God says, I'm going to put you at a table in the presence of your enemies because what might happen in the midst of that meal, what might you find? Your enemies might not feel like your enemies anymore when you share a meal with them. Sometimes our best way to find new friends is to just share a meal with them and understand that. So, this is what I want you to think about. When you're mad at somebody, the best thing you can do is treat them nicely. What might they do to you? Treat you nicely back. Is it really hard to stay mad at somebody if you're treating them nice and, you're treating, and they're treating you nice? Not really. It's a lot harder to stay mad at somebody. Now, you could. If you really want to, you could. But I think God would say to you, you can find a way to always make new friends. And I think that's what God's talking a little bit about in Psalm 23. I'm going to give you an opportunity to always make new <coughs> friends. Thanks for coming up and sharing a couple of minutes with me about that. You can head back to your seats. <laughs> She's going off to make a new friend. <laughs> so this Psalm 23, if it's truly a vision of heaven, has anybody thought, I can't wait to get to heaven so that I can be set at a table with all of those people I considered my enemies on earth? Please, God, make that table for me. Anybody thinking that's going to be their perfect heaven? No! But I think what God wants is our perfect heaven. Can you imagine walking around heaven and being at that place? And you know, you're out there, you're greeting, hi, hi, hey, great to see you. And then you see somebody else coming and you kind of turn away, you know? It's like, what are you doing there, Pastor Gary? I'm just sharing a little heaven this morning. You know, is that right? No, I almost have this idea that heaven can't be what it is until we experience everything that we promise we will do for young people at baptism. Today at 1015, we have four baptisms. And I want you to turn to the back of your worship bulletin and see what's going to happen in that moment. We are going to welcome these people into this new venture of, of being in a relationship with God. And listen to this at the very bottom there, we welcome you. We're gonna say we welcome you, we promise to walk together on our journey of faith, to participate in God's mission of what? Love, now we got that, right? We get love, that's easy. That's, that's, that's a lot of words, right? We can share all the words of love, we want to. But love and reconciliation. That's where it comes together for us. That's where God says, I'm going to set a table before you in the presence of your enemies because we cannot have heaven if we have enemies. We cannot have the, all the joy of Jesus' resurrection if we still have enemies. Sometimes I think, I need that. I need just to sit across from somebody with a, with a meal set before us and realize that I need to do something real here. I mean, who are, those, who are those people that you know you'd really rather avoid for the rest of your life if you could, you know? Is it that, that neighbor with the barking dog that you really just can't wait for a for sale sign to go up in their yard? and you wish that, that somehow that would just come together and, and, and you can't imagine sharing a meal with them, but what might happen if you did? Could it be an ex-spouse that you continue always to kind of just 
kind of just rub against each other and, and what might happen if you actually decided to share a, a meal of love and reconciliation? Could it be that, that coworker who it's gonna be tough to share the meal with because you know they stole your lunch last week, you know, but, but, but you still need to somehow sit down with them? Who are those people that are preventing you from experiencing heaven on earth because there's still animosity. Jesus would say, I came as the good shepherd for a reason, to know, to know that I could bring love to the world in a new way, that love and reconciliation go hand in hand, that Jesus would go to the cross be raised from the dead for you to give you just a glimpse of what heaven could be. The thought of having an opportunity to go beyond words, but put deeds into action, to let love and reconciliation actually be a part of your lives. For all that Jesus did for us, is it possible that we could somehow manage just to get through a lunch with somebody that we might have a chance for heaven to be a little bit more here on earth? Just a lunch. Amen. I invite you to stand as together we sing him 764. With the whole church, we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 5 of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory, judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Good Shepherd be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. Yes. seats a few ministry opportunities to bring to note to you on the top of page six. Following uh, worship, you're invited to go into the fellowship hall for the Make Your Mark event where you can use a sharpie to make some messages of prayer and blessing as we continue to refurbish that space for ministry admission. You'll also be able to sign up for Be the Blessing the first weekend of June, our service event. There's a little blue pamphlet that's available at the uh, Welcome Center where you can see the projects and sign up for where you'd like to contribute and uh, as it were in uh, truth and action and then let's see you lost the page the next one what do we have rejoicing spirits that ministry of our congregation for those adults with dif uh, developmental needs has a service next sunday evening to be in prayer for or support of our attendance and then the next thing to know is congregational meeting two sundays from now following the second service so please make time to consider those and all the other announcements found in your bulletin and all those uh, ministries and opportunities are made possible through your generosity, so this time we collect our offering as an act of worship.
Please rise for our prayers. Rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray for the witness of the church, the wholeness of creation, and all who are in need. Lord, bless all who shepherd your sheep and guide them in, your, in their serving. We pray for church custodians, office managers, Sunday school teachers, confirmation leaders, baptismal sponsors, pastors, youth workers, and bishops. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Earth Day, help us to care for our creation. Restore natural environments damaged by our own hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect and guide first responders. Bring mercy and justice with their presence. We pray for military personnel, firefighters, paramedics, and police officers, and for disaster relief and crisis intervention teams. We pray for the 40 military couples at the Healthy Marriage <coughs> Retreat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal and renew all who ache for a better tomorrow. We pray for the unemployed and the underemployed, the forgotten, the nameless, and the outcasts, for our enemies and for our loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to all who are restless, anxious, or uncertain the peace that you promise that's deeper and richer than anything we can even imagine. We pray for all those who live with chronic pain, who live with anxiety, and who are ill or hospitalized. We pray especially for Larry, Jan, Jeff, John, Doug, and Bonnie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nourish us with the testimony of all the disciples who have gone before us. We give thanks for the faithful departed and their witness in every age. We pray especially for the Albrecht and Redbeck families in the death of Betty, and the Heilman and the Frazee people, the families in the death of Robert. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust all of our prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them by the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come now to this table of mercy, prepared with wine and bread, gifts given by God, with that they become bread, or body and blood of Christ through those promises. It's a generous and an expansive invitation because and solely because it is Christ's invitation. Those who are willing of heart are invited to come and receive these gifts for the people of God. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. His hearts give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, gifts of the Good Shepherd given for the nourishment, sustenance, and inspiration of we, his sheep. Amen. You may be seated. Come forward at the direction of the ushers to any of the available communion stations where, upon receiving the bread, invited to dip that in the chalice of wine. Note that there is gluten and alcohol free at the base of the center aisle if that meets your needs.
I invite you to stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And on this day, some of you may note, we have one of our communion visitor kits on our altar, which we consecrate, and then one of our members of our congregation who take communion to those who are either unable to join us for being in the hospital or being at home or for whatever reason. We, uh, we say a prayer in sending of this gift that we have celebrated around the table as we send it on behalf of this place. You can say that one, that Two prayers is great. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world in action and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and in prison. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
And on this good morning for our benediction, I invite you to turn to page 115 in the front of, so keep your finger where the hymn will be, to the front of 115, where we offer this benediction that has as your response, Amen. Quite simply, if when I pause you choose to say Amen, you'll keep up, but if you want to anticipate where it's coming, there we go, page 115. And now may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the God of all grace bless you now and forever. We are sent from worship this day singing verses 1, 4, and 5. 1, 4, and 5 of hymn 652. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.